amazes me is how surprised people are when an ugly person can do something that another person can do. Whenever an ugly person can do something, people are just like, did you see that? Did you see that person do something that I've seen other people do? Did you see that? That's how we got America's Got Talent, right? Yeah. It came from Britain. The, the, the beginning show, the first show, was Britain's Got Talent. And on that first season, there was a woman named Susan Boyle. Yeah. Susan Boyle had an angelic voice, beautiful voice, but she looked like a troll doll, right? <laughs> so when she started singing, people just lost, what are you doing, what? <laughs> and it became one of the first viral video moments. People would show other people, can you believe that? Can you believe that she can do that? <laughs> She's not even pretty, and she can do that. <laughs> do I believe that ugly people can sing? Yes. They've been doing it forever. <laughs> have you seen Mick Jagger? Have you? And I'm, not, I'm not talking today, Mick Jagger. I'm talking young Jagger. Young Jagger. You remember that? Remember that look? Young Jagger? Hey. Right? He could sing, he could dance, he was a rock and roll star, and that's a good thing. Because if he couldn't, if he was like the night shift at a Circle K, you'd be like, I don't want him touching my stuff. I don't even think I want to go in there. Have you seen that guy? Huh? Ugly people can sing. So many, so many of them can sing uh, that quite honestly, when I meet an ugly person, I tell them, Sing me some. <laughs> I just expect them to be able to do it. <laughs> uh. My wife loves the voice. Uh, she loves it because she's a beautiful person. She calls it a singing competition. I call it a sad story competition, right? Because they sing for 60 seconds, but they tell a four and a half minute sad story. That's a sad story competition. If you meet somebody and every time you meet them, they punch you in the face four times, but then they kiss you, they're not a kisser, okay? <laughs> and I don't know why you keep meeting up with that person. It's clearly abuse, yeah. But I know why they do it. I know why they tell the story, because I've walked in on my wife watching the show and I've asked her. Hey, honey, who do you think's gonna win? Well, I hope Ryan wins. <laughs> is he the best singer? Well, he's really good, but he had a very difficult life. <laughs> but he's not the best singer? It's not just about singing, it's called the voice! <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand what the story is for. I understand the singing part. Get up there, sing. If you can sing, I'll applaud. If you can't, we'll get rid of you. It's almost as funny, you know? <laughs> But what does the story have to do with it? It's a craft and a talent. That's it, a craft and a talent. Look, if you hire somebody to build cabinets in your kitchen and you come home and they're all slanted, but your wife's like, well, he's adopted. Are you gonna be? <laughs> Are you going, well, I guess we'll put everything on the left. I mean, it's gonna end up there anyway. <laughs> Nothing against you, buddy, but, I mean, your adopted dad didn't show you how to use a level? I don't know. <laughs> the sad story just doesn't, and it's always, a sad story, right? It's always, it's never a good story. That's how you know it's ridiculous, right? And the reason why it's not a good story is because we don't want to hear a good story. That's not what people are made of. You ever have somebody tell you about a new relationship they're in that they just met? I met somebody and it's really sweet. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> but if they say, and we just broke up and it was so horrible. You're like, oh, get the popcorn. I'm here, I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
We don't want good stuff. That's why you never see, nobody ever comes out on those shows and goes, um, the reason why I'm here is um, well, my parents love and support me and I come from a wonderful community uh, and I have, with great schools and I have respect for myself and others. Boo! <laughs> Boo! We're not rooting for you, your parents did it right! Boo! <laughs> Boo, you had a good life! Boo! <laughs> Boo, fascist! Boo! Fascist, where'd you get that? So it's gotta be a sad story. And quite honestly, a lot of people in America don't have that sad of a story. You know, so they start, they start reaching for stuff. One of my parents was an alcoholic. Oh, get in line, Kevin. You know, I mean? <laughs> people were mean to me in school. Same line, Kevin, same line. <laughs> I'm not saying your story doesn't mean anything. Don't walk away with that. Like, your story, if you have a sad story, I'll listen to it. It means something, it's important. It just doesn't mean anything to your talent, right? <laughs> but if you have a sad story, I'll listen. My dry cleaners I go to uh, is a Haitian family that lost everything in that huge earthquake. Lost everything, started from scratch. Not only that, they immigrated to America, learned a new language, saved up money, bought a small business, and as a family, they run it together. And whenever the matriarch is there, I sit down with her and I let her tell me the story. Because it's a story of struggle, it's a story of independence, it's a story of overcoming obstacles. It's an American story. But if my shirts aren't available by Tuesday. <laughs> well, then I gotta go around the corner to the Filipino family that lost everything in the tsunami. Now. They're a little heavy on the starch, but I need it Tuesday, you understand? <laughs> All right, listen, you're gonna hate this joke, but I'm gonna do it anyway, okay? I know you're not, I know, I know, and I, I'm on your side, kinda. But I wrote it, and I like it, so I'm gonna do it. Here's how dumb I am. I'm always waiting for a real moment on these shows. I watch with my wife, the, you know, the voice. I'm, I'm always waiting for a real moment. And it's television, and I know television. I've written for television. So I know there's no real moments. It's all scripted. But still in my dumb head, I'm like, one day they're gonna do the right thing, you know? <laughs> and I always wanted this moment. Because they, they have it on every one of these shows. A little girl, she comes out on stage and she's sad. She's sad, and the judge is like, why are you sad? She's like, my Nana died. And just once, I want a producer to step out into the spotlight with a clipboard and go, guess what, honey? That's what Nanas do, okay? <laughs> what music would you like us to cue up? <laughs> this is a singing competition, not who has the fewest relatives. You'd clearly move on in that. <laughs> See, I told you you weren't gonna like that joke. <laughs> and it's funny. disagree with you. <laughs> My wife likes The Voice. I like Chopped. It's a competition show, right? I like Chopped. If you don't know, Chopped is a cooking competition show. Grand prize, $10,000. 10 grand. And what they do is they take everyday regular chefs, right? And they, uh, they give them a weird ingredients and they have a short period of time to make a meal. So they have weird ingredients in a short period of time to make a meal. So they'd be like, all right, open your baskets. All right, you have the buttocks of an otter, all right, um, <laughs> saliva of an orphan, and a wasp nest, okay? <laughs> now you have 20 minutes, make us a dessert, right? And I'm on the edge of my couch. Is he gonna use strawberries, is he? <laughs> no blackberries, because of the wasp nest. What was I thinking? <laughs> but definitely Moss Capone. I don't even know what that is, but they use it. Right. Here's the reason why I love Chopped. Chopped has the sad story portion of the show. They let the chefs tell their sad story. But the great thing about Chopped is that the judges listen to the sad story and then they just disregard that. <laughs> they base everything on the food. So they'll have moments like this. Um, the reason why I'm here this week is my best friend, my aunt, 
passed away. She was 90, so there at the end, pretty much everything was killing her. And, um, <laughs> and she's the one who taught me to cook, you know? And I just want her to know that this tradition will carry on. And the judge is like, oh, oh, that's awful. You know what else is awful? This chum bucket you just laid in front of me. Yeah. yeah. Would you season that with your tears? Is that what you do? Pack your things and get out. You've been chopped. I come off of my couch. Yeah! Finally a meritocracy. I wish they go all the way because they always have chefs on the show that say, I'm out here for the money. It's 10 grand, that's a lot of money. Not only do I want them there for the money, I want that to be a part of their story. That's the Chopped episode I'm looking for. Hey Bob, why are you on Chopped this week? Oh, uh, well, all these guys in South Boston, 10 grand, and if I don't pay them by Friday, I'm dead. <laughs> Sharpen your knives, Bob. Big day for you, isn't it? How about you, Mary? Why are you here? These people have our children, okay? <laughs> and if we don't give them money, I don't think we're gonna see Tommy and Katie again. Well, get your mise en place in place, Mary. <laughs> How about you, Chad? How you doing? Oh, I'm killing it on Instagram, and I got a, I got a trust fund. I'm doing good. And everybody hates Chad. <laughs> He's the villain. They got hashtags. Hashtag boo Chad. <laughs> but you know who wins? Chad. You know why? He knows how to cook risotto, and that's all this is about. <laughs> um, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs>